But if it's a great idea, you may suggest it to another entrepreneur that you get along with. And people, so how much do you share? How much do you not share? No, he's, he's asking how much should an entrepreneur share with you guys, to, you know, because he doesn't want you to run off with the idea and he doesn't want other people to run off with the idea. How do you think about that balance? Yeah. yeah um, well, um, we, we encourage the entrepreneur to share a lot. Uh, I mean, our business is built on on understanding your business to the extent where we can assess the, you know, the, the opportunity itself, but assess you as a person and as a team with your ability to actually execute and make it happen. Um, that's one. Two is it's built on confidentiality and trust between us. You know, if you can't, don't, don't trust us, right, and you ask us to trust you, there is a, a mismatch here. So it's a really a, a, a trust and, and, and a, an even uh, playing field between us. And the third aspect is our business is built on, on privacy and confidentiality because we hear a lot of pitches. We hear a lot of pitches on a daily basis. So, you know, there is no point for us in sharing between us because we will lose the supply, you know, that actually keep us going. We need that, that relationship to be uh, very trustworthy and, and, and open. Be, be careful. Chris, yeah. you have I mean, I'd like to take one, one, more question, yeah, one more question from the one but left before, from before I take that question, I'm going to then wrap by asking each one of you in like a sentence to share your last unobvious piece of advice. So can we just take one here and then we'll go here. Way in the back, please. By the way, I think privacy and confidentiality in the VC business doesn't really exist. Yep. I think it's bullshit. We talk to each and other a lot. We talk to each other a lot, and uh, and you know, uh, you should you should you should just know that you know once once your ideas are 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 out there, you know, chances are people are going to talk. So if I were you, if, if if you know, there are a couple of cases, right? One is if you're the right, or if if if, if the entrepreneur sharing his idea is the right one to execute, it has the momentum and so on. The key thing that's going to protect you is your momentum on execution, your ability to go fast. That's the key thing. Uh, ideas are cheap anyway. A lot of people have ideas. But very few people can execute on them. And that's what we look for. One more, please. I have a question about uh, coming, going for second rounds of fundings. Now, this is a lot easier when you have a VC involved with you in the very beginning. But if you don't have one and your business has grown and now you're getting to the point where you want to go for a round of funding, and you're not necessarily in trouble. Uh, you're fine, but you don't want to continue your organic growth, but you want to leapfrog. Uh, how do you go approaching people? This is, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's a, there's a gap. It seems like there's a gap between if you don't have a VC on board, and then you want to get funded again, uh, seems like there's no place to go. Uh, maybe you can offer some insight on this. So, so you have uh, existing investors that uh, are not VC-like in terms of value adding. They're just Correct. passive financial investors. And Correct. you're looking to raise a second round of financing. And you're asking, how can you go about doing that when you've got no one helping you with the introductions? Is that Correct. what you're saying? Correct. OK. So, yeah, I, uh, then in that case, this is your first institutional round, which means you're, you're not treated any differently from any first time raising. It's like, it's, I would, we would consider your first round uh, the, you know, personal money or like friends and family money. Right? So you're really like a first time entrepreneur, first time fundraising uh, startup. You're not viewed any differently from the rest of the guys who are coming in looking for money for the first time. Right? In, in this, and in this market, in, in, the, in the region here, it's still a very small market, small community in terms of entrepreneurs and in terms of the, uh, the investors. You know, for example, Abraj Capital is known and we have offices in 35 countries. But even in this room here, there are, there are many known investors and we are probably what a handful. So you go to any conference, you go to any, uh, to any event, you are bound to meet, you know, the, the people that are, uh, uh, that are investing in this region. Eventually, you know, it is going to be a little bit, uh, you know, at, at a larger scale, but we're not there yet. So there is that personal approach that is very much uh, available right now. Yeah. And do your homework, right? You know what the investors like and don't like. Look at the investment portfolio. Uh, you know, th think about how you position 
in the portfolio vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the stuff they've done. Uh, all these are generally useful. And, and, and get more than one person. I can't tell you how important it is to be talking to multiple investors as you're going through the process. A lot of times I've met people, particularly here, who thinks that one person is the one that matters, but it puts you at a disadvantage, I think, quite early on. So with that, and I don't want to keep you from lunch, but I just want to have one quick, unobvious piece of advice to these folks, and I'll start, Bummer, with you. I think, actually, my advice is pretty obvious, but my advice is keep trying. Uh, I think, look, the reality in this region right now is there's very little capital available for startups. So it's, it's a hard slog. It's hard to raise. Maybe it's okay. Maybe you can raise some angel money, some seed money. It's really hard to raise that Series A because there are very few people out there who are willing to do it here. So it's, it's hard. It's really hard. This is a hard place to, to do these ventures. I can tell you in Turkey, it's been like that as well for the last 10 years, but it's gotten a lot easier in the last two years. So now in Turkey, there are probably four or five funds that are actively doing Series A investing that are local, in addition to all the foreigners who want to come into Turkey. So it's gotten a lot easier. And, um, and the guys actually in Turkey who are benefiting from that now are the guys who've been suffering for the last 10 years, have been trying, have been doing different startups, failing, trying again, and so on. And all that experience is actually not wasted. It's all helping towards ultimately you know, becoming, I think, a very successful entrepreneur. So my advice is keep trying. Um, so uh, in the absence of capital that's easily and freely available, uh, I think the best differentiation that entrepreneurs have is to build an incredible team, right? Uh, it, the team with combined with the right problem, you know, gives the investor confidence. And, and, you know, these things bubble to the top. And when you become a lot obvious to the scarce money that's existing and available, and, and that's the best way you can differentiate uh, in, amidst the noise. When you show, and when you combine that with showing uh, the investors, like if you watch Hugo, the movie, right, uh, instead of trying to show us just the train station, right, and looks everything runs and it works great, you should take us into your world, your Hugo's world, where you see all the nuts and bolts, all the gears, all dirt and pain. And, and when we see the reality of how well and how difficult, yet how difficult yet how well you try your best to do it, that's when the investors get a lot of confidence that this is the right team and you want to get, go with it, right? So that's my point. Yeah, I, I, would, uh, I would second the, the, the team, um, build the team, get a team around you, get the best team you can get out there, and uh, that'll be the, the, the first thing. And you have to build that relationship with your team where you, know, you are all aligned uh, behind the same goal. The second thing is, I, I've, I've talked about a lot of the obstacles that are embedded in the, in the region. Innovate, innovate, be crazy, think out of the box, how to not only create value, but eliminate obstacles, okay? Create value, eliminate obstacles. Think about it both ways, because this is, built in this region here, and we just cannot avoid the fact. And the third here is think big. I would keep, you know, I've been, I've been in this region here doing a lot of uh, uh, discussions and exchange with, with the local entrepreneurs. Think big. If you have found a market, take a step back. Say, is it th this is market or it's even bigger? Think big because, you know, you could be tapping into something because it's such an early stage in this market. You could be tapping into something that is huge, but you just didn't see it. Okay, so uh, that that is very very important, and don't ask us to see it for you. You see it first. It's been uh, a pleasure and honor to listen to you guys. We could have a round of applause for this great panel. Thank you. <laughs>